Is Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky about to become a U.S. citizen and be shipped off to live in the sunny state of Florida? Well, a new report has surfaced from someone claiming to be a U.S. Secret Service agent. And according to the report, uh, well, ostensibly, this person is a whistleblower still working at the U.S. Secret Service, trying to remain anonymous. Uh, he says he's released, he has documents claiming that the U.S. has already negotiated a plan to remove Zelensky from power, bring him to the United States as a U.S. citizen. And here you can see these naturalization uh, documents, which have been provided, which he apparently uh, leaked to the media. And you can see Vladimir Zelensky here on this U.S. Naturaliz naturalization document. And he also then published a YouTube video anonymously backing up these claims. Listen. I work at the United States Secret Service, Office of Protective Operations. I have information which I believe needs to be made public. In mid-November, our office was tasked with planning and preparation for an operation to ensure the protection of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and his family. The Biden administration is making active preparations based on the idea that first, Zelensky won't be the president of Ukraine after next spring, and second, that he and his family will need long-term or permanent security inside the United States. The Biden administration is planning to allocate an incredible amount of money and resources for this operation. Zelensky is not just being given a couple of security agents, he will be given full Secret Service protection. The service has to provide him with a house, security, transport, and even a personal servant. So is there any truth to these claims? Well, Larry Johnson is a former CIA agent, and he was the very first person, by the way, to report that Zelensky soon would be removed from power. He was the first person ringing the alarm bell saying Zelensky is in trouble. And this was months ago, and now we have this report. So we thought, who better to ask than Larry himself? Larry, welcome back to the show. Good to see you. Hi, Clayton. So what do you make of this report? Of course, you were out there at the very beginning of this, saying that your intelligence sources were saying that Zelensky was in trouble. Now we have this naturalization documents. What do you make, first of all, of the documents? Well, the, the documents appear legit. Now, the... In, in this day and age with all the computerized information, it's easy to fabricate and replicate legitimate documents. So the, the, the one thing I do notice on it, he has not signed it. So this is not necessarily a done deal. I, I was struck by the fact that when you read it, the, the, it was supposedly issued out of Tampa, Florida, which is on the west coast of Florida, but his re, he's listing his residence as Vero Beach. And Vero, is on the east coast of Florida. It's exactly about a, from Tampa, it's about a three and a half hour drive. I know because I've made it a couple of times. So uh, I don't know why they wouldn't have gone down. You know, if you're, in Vero, if you're in Vero Beach, it's easier to go to either Jacksonville or West Palm or Miami. So it, it's just sort of odd. You know, it, it, it's odd that they'd choose Tampa as sort of the homeland security uh, destination. And do we think that this is something that he did? Like any other American would roll down to a local oh, no. bureaucratic office and like go into the post office or the DMV? Someone did this on his behalf, clearly, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. So I'm sure in the discussions, uh, we got various visits, whether it's with uh, Bill Burns, uh, the CIA director, or Lloyd Austin. Or Anthony Blinken. At, at some point in one of those conversations, I'm sure that uh, Zelensky has asked for a guarantee. He, he wants something more than just a promise that the United States will have his back, because I think he's got at least enough understanding of history to recognize how many times the United States has allied itself with people and then betrayed them. And just ask Saddam Hussein. We can show pictures of him with Don Rumsfeld glad handing in tuxedos. And next thing you know, Rumsfeld is having him rounded up and, sh and hung. So, uh, you know, I think Zelensky wants more than just a pat on the back and an assurance we'll take care of you when the time comes. I think, you know, so that very well could be that that's what triggered this particular thing. But, but Zelensky's in, you know, the, the trouble he's facing right now is that he's up against General Zeluzny 
And when it comes to the possibility of a power struggle, I, I always bet on the guns. Zeluzhny's got the guns. Zelensky doesn't. And it seems that Zeluzhny, in, in addition to the guns, has at least the support of the military in part. Uh, we have videos over the past few weeks showing Ukrainian soldiers putting up pictures of Zelensky's face on a target practice yeah. board and shooting at Zelensky. Not pictures of Putin, <laughs> yeah. pictures of, of their own president. No, not a good sign, you know, when, when you're... When your soldiers who you're supposed to be the commander of are using you for target practice, uh, albeit as a proxy, uh, it, it still sort of lets you know where the sentiment of the troops are. And, you know, there is no good news for Ukraine on any part of the battlefield. And that's, uh, you know, Russia's campaign to grind them down uh, is, you know, some have hoped that, you know, Russia would grow weary of this or that it's, Somehow, Russia is becoming great, dissatisfied with its progress. I don't think that's the case at all. In fact, what I've, uh, what I've picked up, I'm actually in Moscow right now, and in discussions with some people, it's clear that the public sentiment is going more, growing more strident against, you know, before they would have uh, accepted limited outcomes in, in Ukraine. You know, it was, uh, okay, we'll just keep part of the Donbass. No. You know, at this point, I think there is growing public support that they take all of Ukraine. They they want to be done with this uh, because of the they, they've recognized within the West a betrayal, the West supporting neo Nazis, where they thought that they had eliminated this whole Nazi threat at the end of World War II, and lo and behold, it's back. Uh, and and what's you know really fascinating about Russia right now is the re the religious revival that has awakened in this country. It is massive, it is significant, and it is not a superficial thing. It is a deep-seated belief in the Eastern Orthodox Christian Church, uh, really that tra traces its origins to Christianity, the very beginnings of Christianity. So uh, the, that's one of the things the West doesn't understand. And that is a key factor in this battle with Ukraine, because the Ukrainians are seen as embracing Satanism, as embracing homosexuality, as embracing a variety of deviant lifestyles that the Russians themselves reject and reject, you know, vehemently uh, that they they embrace, let's call them traditional Christian values, because that's ex exactly what they are. Well, Russia recently banned transgender, uh, I, I don't know, a whole host of transgender-related items well, right. uh, in the country. And, and homo yeah, what, what they've done is they said that uh, they're not going to allow organized LGBTQ groups to come out, protest, and be, uh, you know, have a public presence. But they've said that if, if you are homosexual, what you do in the privacy of your bedroom is your business, not theirs but do not bring it into public as a public policy issue because it will be uh, considered illegal. And, you know, candidly, that's one of the things that's driving hatred in the West towards Russia because uh, the, the, the West's almost obsession with the whole rainbow flag movement is something that, you know, Russia saying, no, we're, we're not going that way. Uh, we, we, promote, we promote traditional heterosexual relationships uh, the good old fashioned mom and dad and kids. That's where they are. And, and the West really makes a mistake if they fail to understand and appreciate that that is what is, that's what's happening right now in Russia. Interesting. Um, before I get you out of here, Larry, I want to kind of circle back just on this secret service agent, yeah. this purported secret service agent who uh, is, you know, leaking this information about these Zelensky documents. <clears throat> what do you make of that? The fact that a U.S. Secret Service agent would have access to these documents and is kind of blowing the whistle on this. Why, why the Secret Service? Well, for, from time to time, Secret Service could be called in uh, to consult on dignitary security because that's their expertise. Um, but uh, I do know for a fact that Zelensky's security detail is really comprised of British Special Air Service, SAS. So, 
uh, it would be a little odd that it's, uh, it's not like the Secret Service has a detail uh, in, in Ukraine to work with Zelensky and his crew. Uh, that, that, I guess that's the only thing I find a little suspicious about it. I would have, if there was a whistleblower, it would have come out of uh, Homeland Security. But, you know, it's not to say that it's not impossible. But I, uh, the, the key would be to watch what happens in Ukraine and particularly in Kiev over the next couple of days, because the things are really starting to come to a boil. The, the former president, Poroshenko, was uh, scheduled. He would actually got approval from their Congress to leave Ukraine to go on a tour and a trip to try to drum up more support for Ukraine. And someone leaked a, a phone call, whether it's a legitimate call or it's a contrived call, where he was supposedly plotting with Viktor Orban of Hungary uh, to get rid of Zelensky. Zelensky prevented Poroshenko from leaving the country. He created a bit of an uproar there. So, uh, you know, with each passing day, Zelensky imposes the kinds of controls on people in Ukraine that we used to associate with the old Soviet Union. So there's nothing democratic well, I do find about it. They're, you know, cracking down on churches and, and on mm -hmm. press freedom and on political parties. Well, I do find it very interesting that as you and I are talking this afternoon or this evening, uh, Rus uh, Ruslan Stefanichuk, who is the second in command in the power, the ascension to the presidency behind Zelensky, is in Washington today. Flew to the Capitol to meet with uh -huh. senators. Not not Zelensky. He went instead in his yeah. place and is meeting with members of Congress. The the, the second in the line to the presidency. And apparently Zelensky is going to do a Zoom call or whatever. But I find it very interesting that he's not going and the second in command is now in Washington asking for money. Yeah, well, that's that's another sign that Zelensky doesn't feel secure, that if he leaves Kiev, that uh, he would be vulnerable and could be easily replaced. Now, the West, the West may be already going to do that for him. Uh, there is no path forward for Ukraine. That's what people in the West need to understand. There is, it's not a matter of coming up with a new package of financial aid or a new set of military equipment. Nothing is going to change the trajectory of what is taking place in Ukraine right now, which is a Russian victory. And Russia has not been, despite the weather, despite the you know, pretty inclement weather with snow and ice, uh, the Russians continue to advance, and the Ukrainians are being forced to cede territory each passing day. Interesting. Larry, we always appreciate your insights. Thank you so much for this. We just want to get your take on this, these naturalization documents. And is Zelensky going to be living out his days in Vero Beach, Florida, in a $20 million mansion? Uh, we'll see. I guess we'll, the next few days, next few weeks are going to be very, very interesting. Larry, thanks so much for your uh, insight on this, as always. Great to see you. Thanks, Clayton. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.